How to create a notebook in Canva for Amazon KDP. Today, I'm creating a notebook in Canva for Amazon KDP. Okay, so the very first step is to head over to kdp.amazon.com slash cover templates. Here, you will enter your book's information. For the binding type, I'm going to be selecting hardcover. Interior type for me will be premier color. Paper type, I'm going to say white paper. Reading direction, I suggest you also select left to right as this is the most common way. And measurement units, I'm going to be selecting inches. So here in the interior trim size, you will select the size of your book. Okay, so a common and versatile size is six by nine inches. So this one right here, and it is literally perfect for most notebooks. So I'll go with this measurement, but you can choose whatever suits your needs, of course. Next, I'm going to be choosing the number of pages we have. Uh, I'm going to be going with 120 for this example. And then I'm going to be um, clicking on calculate dimensions button right here. Okay, now we will see a page like this um, with a lot of information. What you need to do now is to download a template right here. Okay, now that we downloaded our template, we're going to be um, heading to Canva. So if you don't have an account on Canva already, all it takes is your email address and that's literally all about it. So I'm now logged into my account and as you can see, I am in the Canva homepage. From here, um, you'll want to click on create a design button on the top right corner of your page. Here, you're going to click on custom size on the bottom. So now we're going to be opening the template that we just downloaded from Amazon KDP. Or if you think it's easier, you can always go back to the page where we downloaded our template and use the measurements over here. So this is our full cover measurements and this is what we're going to be copy and pasting to Canva. So for the width, I see that our measurement will be 14.045. So I'm copying that, going back to Canva and pasting it to my width like that. And for the height, it's 10.417, so I'm copying it to my height. For the units, it's super, super important because by default, it will be set on pixels, uh, but you need to be changing that to inches. So once your measurements are all in, you're going to be clicking on Create New Design. So as you can see, this brings us to the Canva editor page. Here we're going to start off with adding our template from Amazon KDP. Um, so for that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be heading over to the Uploads tab right over here. And here I'm going to click on Upload File. I'm going to be selecting the relevant template. And what I want to do now is I want to place this in my white page and I am extending it so it fits perfectly to the white box like that. Now that I nicely place my template, I am going on top to the transparency section and I am going to be lowering uh, my transparency, kind of adjusting it like that, but I still do want to keep a bit of the line so that guides me through uh, how I will add my elements and work on my design. And once I adjust the transparency, now I'm going to be clicking on these three dots and then I am going to click on lock and I will lock this template. So what this does is it's eventually um, not allowing you to uh, move the background in any way because if you're not locking it, I'll show you how it looks like, um, it will move from place to place, which can be really annoying, especially when you're working on your cover design. So that's why I also suggest you to lock it. So now it's the fun part, designing our notebook covers. So for that, we have a couple of options within Canva and I want to start off with um, elements. So I am going to the elements tab right here and my theme for this example will be a floral girly type of um, 
notebook. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here and I'm going to search for flowers. Here, I suggest you uh, look through photos because this will probably be the most accurate for what we're looking for. And I'm just going to take my time to explore some available options in Canva. So I found this image that I really like. Um, so I'm basically kind of making this bigger and I'll make sure that it is covering the entire lead area. And now I'm kind of taking away the transparency um, to see where exactly my flowers are being displayed in my cover. So I like this kind of placement right here. You can adjust it however you like, but for me, this looks quite nice. And now I just want to uh, make my book cover a bit more appealing to the eye. And what I'm going to do is I am going to um, show you a little tip just to simply elevate your design. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I am going to um, fully make my cover kind of the picture transparent. And then I am going to elements here. I am going to search for a square. And in the shapes, I am selecting this square right here. And I made this like tinier square. I am placing it over here. And I'm now following the bleed area with my shape and covering it perfectly. At any time, you can zoom in and make sure that you're not making any mistakes. So this looks quite good to me, maybe just a bit more. There we have it. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this, move it to this edge like that. And I'm going to continue to do the same thing until all my edges are fully covered with my shape. So now that all my bleeds are covered with uh, this shape, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select it all and change its color to go along with my selected picture. So I'm thinking this pink one right here would be quite great with it. And once I'm happy with it, I am going to take away the transparency and kind of bring it again to the front. Um, you can double click on it and you can adjust how you want the picture to be displayed on your cover. But I do like how it was. So I'm going to be keeping it as it is. So uh, this is just an idea. You absolutely don't have to go through this phase, but I think it adds a good element to it. Uh, I'm even thinking it could be nice to add something in the middle so it's fully covered like that, but it is perfectly up to you. So now I am going to the text section and one of the cool things in Canva is this font combination. So basically what you'll see here is kind of pre-designed fonts that you can fully customize. So I'm going to be going through the available options and picking a one that I like. So I found this one right here. I already renamed it and kind of uh, rewrote the text to something else. You obviously have the option to further customize this. You can increase the font size, decrease it, change the color, make it bold, italic, whatever you want. Um, one super cool thing is uh, you can even add effects to this. So you can make it like you can add a shadow, you can add a lift, you can make it hollow, splice, outline. Like you have a bunch of cool effects that you can choose from. For example, I think I'll go with this notebook one right here. I think it goes quite well with my team. So another thing that I wanted to show you is to take um, kind of help from AI. For that, I am going to the app sections in Canva. And here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be searching for an app called Magic Media. It will be this one right here. And now um, what you can do here is you can describe Magic Media, what you would like it to create for you. Um, so for example, I'm going to be writing a prompt that says, um, create a floral cover for a notebook. And then the styles, you can select a specific style if you want, but I'm going to be selecting none for now. Aspect ratio is nicely settled on scare. So now that all the information is in, I'm going to be clicking on generate image. So what it will do now is it will generate four unique images that is not available in 
any other part of um, the platform. These two look nice. So what I can do is I can click on this three ruts right here and then I can say generate more like this. So now it will create uh, three more images that are similar to the one that I picked. Um, in the meantime, I am duplicating this page that we've just created and I'm going to be deleting all my elements from here. Once you find a picture that you like from Magic Media, for example, I really like this one, you can place it nicely in the white area in between your frame, so to speak. And you can use even two different pictures for your notebook. Um, so this is exactly how I'm doing it right now. And once I'm happy with um, the pictures that I chose, I'm again going back to the text section. And here I will find another font that I like. I found this one that I liked very, very much, um, but I feel like the color is kind of off. So what I'm going to do is I'm again going to elements. I'm going to click this square right here and I'm going to use this as like a background kind of. I'm going to place it like just behind my heading notebook and I'm going to go to shapes and I'm going to change the color to a more suitable one. I also will change this orange one, like the orange highlights that the font originally has. So I'm going to effects. As you can see, um, this font already is like pre-affected kind of. So I'm clicking on color. I'll change it to this pink one right here. And there we have it. Um, so we created two really pretty looking girly um, notebook covers. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create our pages. So how do we create the interior pages of our notebook? So for that, um, I'm going to file on the top left corner and here you will see create new design. I'm going to be clicking on that and then I'm going to select custom size. Now I'm changing my units to inches. I am coming here. So uh, for my width, I am going to be saying 6.125 and 9.25 inches. Follow through the same instructions, please, if you went with uh, 6 by 9 inches. So uh, once my measurements are in, I'm going to be clicking on create new design. So now I am going to the text section and I'm going to click on add a stop heading. I'm kind of moving this like that. I'm just going to click on shift and I'm just going to type underline. So like that, extend it to the end of my page. So once you've done that, when you click on your line, you'll see this icon, click on duplicate and basically just continue the line. But all my lines are ready. I also kind of like a thin them out. I'm going to select them all and change the color to like a dark gray because um, I feel like a lot of notebooks don't really use like super dark black. So um, I change that like this. So another cool thing you can do for your interior pages is, as you can see, I left quite a bit of a margin here to add heading to it. So I am going to the text section and again, selecting a font combination that I like. I found this font combination that I like. So what I'm going to do is I am going to kind of say special notes like that and kind of adjust it to make it look like this. So another super cool thing that you can do if you don't want to deal with this whole process of creating a line, duplicating it, adding the text, so on and so forth, you can go to designs right here. And basically in the design section, you will see a lot of templates. If you search for notebook page, you're going to be welcomed by a lot of free templates that you can choose from. For instance, you can go with like kind of cool designed ones like this, or you can even select like a really simple kind of ordinary one. But um, this will, of course, also be 100% customizable. So you can even like kind of change the colors of the line and edit it in any way you want. So once you're done with your interior page and you're happy 
happy with the design, you're going to duplicate this as many times as you need. And once you're happy with that, you're going to click on share, download and select PDF standards. That's the file type that works the best for Amazon KDP. Click on download and your interior uh, pages will be uh, downloaded and it will be ready to publish. Same applies for, of course, your cover design. So I have two because uh, I wanted to give you two different examples, but normally you'll have only one cover page. So what you're going to do is click on share and here you're going to click on download. Again, select please uh, PDF standard and then you're going to be ready to download it.